yards for Indiana led to leads up, up to 30 points. Damon Bailey and Brian Evans continue to be team leaders. Tonight, Indiana takes on Tennessee Tech in the 20th Indiana Classic. Productions in association with Raycom Sports presents Big Ten Conference Basketball. Tonight's game is brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance and the more than 600 Farm Bureau Insurance agents throughout Indiana. By your local 76 dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76. And by Edie's Grand Ice Cream, America's finest premium ice cream made in Indiana with Hoosier Pride. We are live from the Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, as Indiana is ready for the 20th annual Indiana Classic. Tonight, the opponent is the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles as they face the 2-1 Indiana Hoosiers. Hello, everybody. John Laskowski and Ted Kitchell about to bring you the action. And as I mentioned, Indiana looking for their 39th and 40th consecutive wins in the Indiana Classic. Tonight's opponents is Tennessee Tech, led by Maurice Houston, a 5'10 guard. This is a team that likes to get up and down the floor and score some points. Likes to get up and down the floor, and they have some good players. So look for them, and Maurice Lucas to get the ball off the board, run it up the floor. If they can't get the layup, look for them to throw it back out, look for the three-pointer, a team that's looking to shoot very quickly. Indiana coming off two big wins, Kentucky and Notre Dame, and one of the stories of the night's ball game is Coach Bob Knight has been suspended from tonight's ball game because of actions from the Notre Dame game last Tuesday night. Let's talk about Brian Evans, though, for Indiana. He has really been a steady player so far in the season. He's been fantastic. The last two games, he's just played some of the best basketball that could have been played. He's hitting the shot, but not only shooting very well from the field, he's rebounding. He's also leading the team in assist at 3.3, tied with Patrick Knight. So Brian Evans has been playing an all-around great basketball game. Now let's look at tonight's Coquilin fueling factors. First, for Tennessee Tech, the most important thing is for them to get good shots shooting percentage, they've got to shoot a good percentage if they're going to win this basketball game. And also rebounding. They need to get the ball off the board. Indiana's been very strong rebounding. They need to get the ball off the board and get it up the floor. For Indiana, get the ball inside. Tennessee Tech does not have big people. You need to get the ball inside. Indiana needs to get to the free throw line. And leadership. Coach Knight will not be on the sidelines. It's very important that people like Damon Bailey Get the, get the team together and get them going in the right direction. Trying to decide what gift to give your babysitter or mail carrier? Try Coquilin gift certificates, available and redeemable at any Coquilin location. Coquilin, where over 50 years of family pride, makes a difference. And we'll be back. Tennessee Tech and the Indiana Hoosiers about ready to tip off. Let's take a look at tonight's Papa John's starting lineups. Take a look at the starting lineups. Indiana pretty much the same. The only, uh, the one key I think will be Houston and Hart. Hart has done a nice job defensively. He started the last few games. Really puts a lot of pressure on. Also Bailey and West. West and Houston both will be looking for the three-pointer. This is a small lineup for Papa John or for uh, Tennessee Tech, so we'll see what they can do. Papa.
Martha, you're back. Indiana, we're all for you. Another Indiana legend brought to you with pride by Farm Bureau Insurance. Both teams now start out to the center court. The UC 25, Pat Knight, is a starter, as you saw there in our opening graphic. That guy's not going to be a starter for about 20 more years, though. Good crowd here tonight. Most, uh, Almost all the hall filled up. One of the rare chances people have a chance to buy tickets here to see the Hoosiers. Alan Henderson will be starting at center. The last time these two teams met back in 84, Indiana won that ball game by 15, and Indiana controls the tap here early. Our officials are Tom Rucker, Sid Rodeheffer, and Ted Valentine, all from the Big Ten Conference. Damon Bailey starts in a hurry. Tennessee Tech starts in a man-to-man -man defense. Right away, Indiana going down inside, whether it be with their bigger people or even Damon Bailey. Damon Bailey did a nice job posting up, getting the good shot. Maurice Houston, number 10, is their big scorer. Here is Carlos Floyd, 21, from Gary Roosevelt High School, an Indiana product. Henderson with that board. Indiana starts to run. Steve Hart getting his second consecutive start. Pat Knight, a jumper inside. Boy, Hart is explosive. Good cut by Pat Knight. Good pass. Just didn't get it down. Indiana, look for Indiana not to help back a lot off this team. They're probably going to try to cut off their, their people outside and pretty much let the inside people handle them one-on-one. -on -one. Now, Yadley, 52, one of the big players, 6'6", 215 for Tennessee Tech. Fights for that rebound out of bounds. There's Maurice Houston, number 10. He'll inbound, and he'll like that shot. No, passed it up. Steve Slowing the ball down a little, Ted, and that's a little surprising. But I think that has a lot to do with Indiana's defense. Indiana not giving them any, any good shots, whether it be from 15 or 20 feet away, as Bailey takes it away, and he's going to take it all the way. And he's going to draw the foul as he runs into some folks seated right under the basket, a couple of Indiana managers. Not a shot that David Bailey's going to miss very often. Good job defensively coming over. Nice job of reading what the, what the offense is trying to do. And you can see it. He's going to take it all the way. Does a nice job of shielding the defensive player off. Like I said, a shot that he is going to hit the majority of the time. Bailey's been getting to the free throw line. He's 31 of 39 this year already. All last year he made 81 free throws, so he has really done a nice job of getting to that line. I think if you take a look, a lot of those have probably been in the last two games. He's been very, very active. Uh, the performance he, he gave in the Kentucky game was just uh, you know, tremendous. Four to nothing, Indiana leads early. Missed a switch, somebody missed a switch. Open shot by Floyd is missed. Now Yadley misses, and Henderson finally pulls it down. Rebounding has been a real strength for Indiana early. Indiana's been very, very good on the boards, and Allen Henderson has led the way, as he did last year. Had a double figures and rebounds already this year a couple of times. And once he gets his hands on it, majority of the time he's going to bring it down with him. Foul on Greg Bibb there, number 34 for the Eagles. Bailey playing the point guard, bringing the ball up. Hart looks inside for Evans. Henderson from 15 feet is not good. West with a good rebound. I would think Indiana would look to get down into the post. Brian Evans got it in the post and really didn't make a move. They take the three. That's what they're looking for. Going to drive in. Nice job of penetrating and popping the ball out. It's Robert West, a 6'3 senior, averaging 15 a game as he puts the Golden Eagles on the board, 4-3. Henderson inside, tough to stop. That's the type of thing I think that Indiana can look for each and every time. I think that they can get it in the post, either pop it back out for good shots, or they can just take it down into the post and their big people can take it to the basket. Double team trapped there by Hart, stolen and back. Evans all alone, but Damon takes it in, and an easy two. That was a great play by Bailey, because Hart knocked it away, then lost control, and then Bailey tipped it back to Hart so he could get control of it. A great play by Damon Bailey. This team really overplays well. They may not be as quick as last year's team, but they can make some steals, and now a whistle. They've got some good quickness out front, though. Steve Hart doesn't uh, really adds a lot to the team as far as quickness and uh, really helps Indiana's defense get started. For substitution, Sharon Wilkerson comes in. There's Frank Harrell, coach of the Golden Eagles. In fact, five years ago today, he took the helm of Tennessee Tech. Sharon Wilkerson comes in, had a good game the other night, hit his first three-pointer, shoots very well, and he also had three assists. So let's see what type of things he can add to tonight. 
Maurice Houston misses from the line. 4.7 assists per game. We're going to see 20, 5'11 senior. Long on that second, but blocked by Sharon. Henderson's open. Oh, good deflection there. Anderson had an easy lay. Indiana out of bounds. 8 to 3, 17 18 mark. Steve Hart comes back in the ball game. Let's see if Tennessee Tech has done their homework. If not, Alan Henderson's going to receive it right over the top of 34. They have it. He wasn't watching at all as Damon Bailey flipped it in, but Henderson couldn't get the shot away. Damon Bailey does. That's a tough shot, too. He came, came inbounds. He gets the ball. He's falling away from the basket, but he got enough enough height up off the floor that he's able to square himself. Nice job. Damon Bailey, eight points of Indiana's 10. Rebound to Henderson. That outlet pass is stolen. Here's Floyd from the corner. Henderson with yet another rebound. Bailey's going to take it all the way. Oh, just misses, but a foul. Damon Bailey kind of pulled Allen Henderson out again there twice. And Allen usually gets the ball, turns, and looks to see what's in front of him. That time he, he's he tried to do his Magic Johnson impression. Instead, Damon Bailey is able to pick it off the floor. Goes to the basket very, very well. Again, very good, very smart as far as using his body and getting to the basket, getting to the free throw line. Reggie Mayo is in the lineup. Bring a lot of guards in for Tennessee Tech. Just need some big men. During tonight's game, we'll be we will be mentioning some of the environmental benefits of soybean products. And with every foul shot made by the Hoosiers, Indiana's 40,000 soybean farmers will make a contribution to Gleaner's statewide food. Bailey misses on that second. Indiana leads 11 to three. Bailey with nine points. Mayo outside, Indiana really bit, packing that defense in there. A little bit of a mismatch with Allen Henderson on Mayo. Indiana's going to have to talk some, talk it over here. There's no reason Allen Henderson should be out there guarding, uh, you know, 5'10". Stays on it. He and Patrick are probably going to have to switch up here. Patrick's guarding a much bigger player inside. Shot clock down. Houston takes the shot with three. And Bibb has the rebound. And the easy putback for Greg Bibb. Not a very good block out there. Indiana kind of looked to see where the ball was going rather than looking for their player blocking out first. Hard on the lob. Oh, my goodness. And there was a Bibb was there to take the charge, and Hart jumped over. There, there were two guys there. I don't think it was that great uh, that great a pass. It was just a tremendous effort by, by Hart to even get the basketball. Unbelievable play. And we have a timeout with 15.44 left. Indiana leads 13 to 5. We'll be back after these messages. Well, he's got to worry about two people underneath him catching the ball and putting it in, and he did all of them. Indiana shooting well, 5 of 7. Inbounds quickly. And Yadley misses a quick foul. I mean, the only reason that was a good pass, Ted, is because Hart could jump so that's a turnover if you or I are going for that pass. That's not credit to pass that much. Come on, let's give Bailey more credit than he wouldn't even think about that pass if you or I were going down the sideline. 13 to 5, Indiana leads. Bailey with a mismatch right here. Decides to go for the three. He is playing so confidently here early in the season. Yeah, he's just really taken over. It's good to see him come out tonight. Play, play so well early. I think it was very important for Indiana to come out in the first five minutes and get off to a very good start. And I think he's really taken it upon himself to do that. 12 points now for Bailey. Inside to Nanyadley. You can see Indiana really not dropping back. They know that they want to pop it out for the three-pointer, so they're going to let the people play one-on-one -on -one inside. There's a three-pointer. Bailey short on that one. Hart nearly comes with that rebound. Pressure in the backcourt. Tennessee Tech wanted to move it up the floor. Good block by Allen Henderson. Great hands to get a hold of the basketball. Pass break to Hart. Fakes the ball and gets the easy layup. And again, a nice effort to get the ball, getting his up there. Let's take a look. I think if you if you take a look at that, though, Damon Bailey once again laid the ball out there in front of him. It's, it's so easy when you're running down the sideline. If you catch the ball in position, you can do something with it. And Damon Bailey really put it in a good position for Steve Hart only to have to take one dribble to the basket. 18 to 5, Indiana leads. Good drive here. That's Maurice Houston and Hart with the block. Outlet pass is nearly thrown out of bounds, and Pat Knight has to save it. Good effort. And a turnover. 
Everybody going after the ball. Not a real good outlet pass there. Tennessee Tech likes to run, but I don't think they can really, they don't get back that well as he traveled. Sid Rota Heffer agrees. Three turnovers now for the Golden Eagles. In the lineup now, number 50, Lorenzo Coleman, seven foot, 240, just a freshman. But this, uh, he is easily the biggest player on the floor now as he guards Henderson. Yeah, he's a big boy, not only tall, but he's got some uh, big shoulders on him there. Robert West also checks in. 14 minutes left, Indiana leads by 13. He's a player I would think Henderson would want to get the ball and probably try to move around rather than try to go up over him as we get an offensive foul, probably for a screen there. And coming from the weak side, that foul goes on Hart, his second. You usually look at the screener there as far as getting the foul. A lot of times it has, to, has just as much to do with the cutter not making a good B cut and it makes the screener look bad. Oh, there's a nice back cut there. Just an individual cut off the fake, but the pass not connected in the fourth turnover. Pat Graham will check in, as will Todd Leary. And I think, Ted, one of the advantages of this Indiana team, a lot of guys can come in and out through the course of a the game. They're coming off the bench, but uh, you know these are guys that had a lot of playing time, not only this year, but last year. And Todd Leary, I thought the last couple games has played very, very well, especially a great defensive effort against Kentucky. Tough pass there as Damon tried to get it into Henderson. Four turnovers for Indiana. But Indiana back quickly on defense. You can see Henderson's got a real load on his hands right there. There's no way that he can stand in muscle on this guy right here. This guy is big boy. Coleman misses on the shot. Evans with the rebound. Indiana brings it up quickly. Cross court now to Bailey. On the drive, a tough pass inside. Goes awry. Bib with a steal. Three on nobody. And Evans has to foul to prevent the layup. Indiana very, very bad as far as getting back off the floor. Damon not a very good pass inside. Tennessee Tech going down the floor. One guy should have taken it all the way to the basket. They get to passing it around here, and uh, really it's a good foul by Evans. Make him go to the line and, and make the shot rather than just giving him an easy two. Robert West at the line. That's his fourth point. Second leading score at 15-3. Twelve fifty-nine left, and the lead cut now to 11. Indiana looked a little sloppy on the last uh, last couple times down the floor. Let's see if they get some good screens to get some of their people over. Larry now playing outside, so Bailey moves inside. Anderson, the fake. That's what he needs to do against Coleman. Coleman cannot move with him on the floor. Good job by Indiana. Indiana back not quick, uh, not back quickly enough, and the Eagles get an easy bucket there as Robert West gets the layup. Got seven points now, 20 to nine, 22, as Evans gets the rebound. Not a great jumper, but he's got long arms, and once he gets his hands on, he's got, a, got good hands. Great, great rebound. I don't think this is the tempo that Tennessee Tech wants to play, coming down and forced into the half-court offense, but that's exactly what Indiana wants to do. Graham keeps Morris Houston on that side. Jump hook is missed. Look for Leary for a three. And you called it. Here it comes from the right side. Not a lot of guys will stop and take a three-pointer on the break, but uh, Leary's confident with that shot. Only if they wear 30 on their back do they stop and take that, <laughs> that three-pointer. Oh, great right pass. Evans behind the back. And that ball deflected away. There's a difference, though, Ted. That's not a flashy pass. That's the pass that got the job done. So it is a flashy pass, but it's one that also got the job done. And Alan Henderson makes the catch. Brian Evans is a tremendous passer. As I said, the, the other night he made a tremendous touch pass, uh, very much Larry Bird-like. Tonight he makes an, another great pass, so uh, Brian Evans really doing the job. Four points now for Henderson. So far this year, the Hoosiers are shooting 71% at the free throw line. And did you know that 75% of America's newspapers are now using environmentally friendly Soe Inc.? He's off to the left on the second, 26 to 9. Indiana leads. Defense doing a nice job to keep the Golden Eagles at nine. Pressure by Leary now on Houston. He tries to go baseline, and Leary's able to cut him off. 
Carlos Floyd loses the ball and goes out of bounds. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated. Incorporate is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated is prohibited. 11.26 left. Tennessee Tech ball out of bounds. Todd Lindemann into the game. Good pressure by Graham outside. Just tough for the Eagles to get a good open shot. They're not, from the looks of things, they're not used to having, having to work so hard to get a shot. And that's the one thing, Indiana, great job. 35 seconds, shot clock went off. Indiana, great defensive. Six turnovers, you've got to watch on those out of bounds play because the clock will not reset every time depending on who knocks it out. And I don't think the Golden Eagles are aware of that. Just shot clock expired one of the few times this year that's happened. Evans inside, the spin oh, hook, tip check. in. That's Lindemann, the big guy, enters the lineup and right there on the boards. Good defense by Damon. He got beat and was still able to steal the basketball. Never gave, never gave up. Here he comes the other way to Graham. Oh, a nice lead pass. That's going to count and a foul. Again, set up by Damon Bailey. They had one guy running running in front of Pat Graham. He throws it behind that guy. Pat Graham fills right in for an easy layup. Great setup by Damon Bailey. You can see here Damon Bailey gets beat. The guy's got the opportunity to go to the basket. Damon doesn't give up, reaches in, gets a hand on the ball, and because of it picks up a steal and an easy basket on the other end. Bailey leaves with 12 points. Good lead pass to Pat Graham enabled him to get the three-point play. 31 to nine, Indiana leads. Greg Bibb with fake there. Again, a tough shot as Coleman gets the rebound. Way outside to West, and he's good on the three-pointer. That's the shot he wants to take. We've got some action here after the ball game, or after the basket. Tom Rucker jumps right in, and he's going to call. He's going to make a call against Todd Lindemann right here. Let's see if we can pick the, uh, what happened there, Ted. We didn't really get a chance to see it. Good shot. Uh, they, they get the rebound. Lindemann doing a nice job. Kind right of there. He swung with his right hand, and right there he got popped by Coleman. And that's uh, in retaliation. Yeah, exactly. T Todd Lindemann was just, he swung his arm around trying to, to feel where the deep, from where the defensive player is. He was trying to find him and feel him, and you can see right there, that's a cheap shot. That, that is not needed. And then Lindemann went after him again. Let's see what the call is here. It's going to be a technical against Lindemann. Well, a lot of times in sports, that that, that type of thing happens. The guy that uh, you know does the damage never gets caught. It's always uh, you know, always the other guy in this situation. Holman goes to the line as the player who was fouled, and they do give Todd Lindemann a personal foul on that. Holman misses his first. There's Ron Felling in the IU bench. Bob Knight is suspended from today's ball game. Coach Norm Ellenberger sitting there in the uh, in the first seat, if you will, next to Dr. Bamba, getting help from Ron Felling and Craig Hartman. It's important here for, for some of the older guys, Todd Leary, Pat Grant, pull them together, make a good defensive stand here, get things going in the other direction. Coleman makes the second free throw, 31 to 13, and the ball out of bounds also to the Golden Eagles. Coleman and Lindemann matched up again inside. As you mentioned, Ted, he's quite a force in there. 
And he's going to get called for the foul. This is going to go against Coleman for pushing inside. The crowd loves that call. Well, if you take a look at it, Coleman is not real quick afoot, so he's going to use, he uses his upper body. It's fine to use your arm to hold a guy off, but you don't swing it. He's swinging it right here. Anytime you swing it, you stick it into a guy's Adam's apple, you're going to get called for a foul. And that's 17 fouls, so Lindemann gets a chance at the line now. One and one. Good look at Coleman there. Fine looking prospect at seven foot and just a freshman. And a big, strong guy. And as I mentioned, any good post player is going to get down in there. He's going to use his body. He's going to use his arm to hold people up. But you can't swing your arm. You get to swing in your arms and your elbows, and you're going to get called for fouls. Todd Long on that shot. Coleman has the board. Teron Wilkerson in the ball game on Mayo. Here's Robert West. He falls way short there, but Bibb has it. Here's Wilkerson with a board, three on three. Oh, oh, good idea, but Mayo able to block that ball out of bounds. Very good defense there. He, he faked up, backed off, was able to get a hand on it, knocked out of bounds. Anderson checks in the game. Five points and six rebounds, looking for another double-double. Brian Evans comes out. Inbounds and outside to Leary. Offense a little tight right now. Need to spread things out, get some good down screens. Better spacing needed. That foul is going to go on Lindemann on the pick, not set. That'll be his second. That spacing so important when you're trying to run the offense. Yeah, it sure is. Everything's a little tight right there. They need somebody, one of the guards needs to pull it out, get everybody in position, and get into the offense. 9.41 left, 31-13. Good D by Pat Graham. Ball away shot by Floyd is missed. Easy rebound. Indiana runs when they get the chance. Slowed up now. Graham with a three-pointer. Tough shot as he was still on the move as he let that one go. But that's the kind of shot he's got to take. Great defensive, hand, great hands by Sharon Wilkerson. Makes the play, knocked out of bounds. And back to Pat Graham. A couple years ago, he would have shot fake and tried to drive that ball to the basket, either that or pass. That time he came off looking for the shot. He was ready to shoot it, and he, was knocked, he knocked it down. He took what was open. Ron Felling on the IU bench. Coach talked about effort before the ball game, and this team has shown some very nice effort here. 34 points already, and only 9.17 left here in the first half. So Ron Wilkerson, the freshman out of Jeffersonville. Will be at the line getting some good playing time along with Steve Hart. Their first year here at IU. This is a long. very good shooter. He's got a wonderful stroke. Long on that one. The Eagles come back. Mitchell launches one from way outside. It's long. Henderson with the board. Off to Graham. He's floating on that one. And he's going to get called on a charge. And not happy with that call. No way is that guy set. That guy is moving all the way underneath him. Okay, we're we're going to take a look at it. Pat Graham go, tries to avoid the man, and the guy slides all the way over to him. And uh, the guy is almost underneath the, the bank board when, when he finally is able to get the charge. Foul goes against. You can see him lean all the way over there. Goes against Graham. 16 foul for Indiana. Another battle, Coleman and Lindemann are inside there. Cross court pass, here's Houston. And he's got a three pointer, a couple feet even outside the line. Shows you what kind of range Houston has. His first three points of the game, 34, 16. Indiana really needs to go at some of their guards. Their guards aren't very big. Damon Bailey right away saw it, went inside. Pass ran with another three pointer. We know he's been successful, Ted, when he's gotten set. But these last two three-pointers are really, he's still been moving. Well, he's, he's come off some good screens. That's a definite foul on Allen Henderson. When you swing down, you're going to get fouls. If he had just kept his hand straight up in the air and caught it after the guy shot it, but when you swing down, you're going to get fouls. That foul on Henderson. Bailey and Pat Knight check back in. Bailey got 12 points. Well, David Bailey's been sitting over there on the bench. He's probably watched. He's picked a couple things up. When he comes down on the offensive end, he'll probably check out to see who's guarding him. He's probably going to try to take them inside and try to post up if possible. 
Greg Bibb at the line, 8.7 a game. 6'7", sophomore. A little jerky on that one, and it's long. Really quiet when the opponents get to the free throw line. Second one falls short. There's Coleman, though, and he's got the easy put back as he easily put it over Allen Henderson. Allen Henderson, you've got to get a body on him right away. Oh, very good pass. Graham gets his feet set and gets right around Coleman for the layup. The offense really clicking as Graham collects his 11th point of the game. It was a good pass by Pat Knight, but it was terrible defense by Tennessee. Nobody picked Pat Graham up, just did a nice job of giving the ball off. He was just a little give and go. Pat Knight saw what was happening, gave it right back for an easy layup. Defensively, that will hurt you when the guards are able to penetrate inside the lane. As Norm Ellenberger checks up to the scoreboard, Ron Felling on the right. Got to keep that ball out of the middle because the defense breaks down when you get that close. Especially little guards. You got Houston, he's not very big, handles the ball very well. He's going to penetrate inside and then throw it back out. You've got to back off either that or you've got to have somebody else come up and help double team or at least fake up and make him pick, pick his dribble up. Because when you come over to help on that situation, he throws a little bounce pass, and now the big guy's got a slam dunk. So either way, the guy gets in there, you're in trouble. Offensive rebound on the free throw, but a travel by Mitchell. 7.51 left, Indiana leads 39 to 19, and we'll be back after these messages. Or possibly you can get it yourself. I guess we don't have it on camera. Indiana inbounds, Bailey brings it up. And you're right, Ted goes right inside. Here's Brian Evans, he's got a size advantage and an easy jump shot from the baseline. Damon Bailey's mentioned that to somebody or the coaching staff has, has obviously during that timeout talked to somebody because you have got to take the ball inside. They are just not that big. Mitchell from the outside is way long. Bailey gets that rebound flat-footed. Lobs to Henderson in the layup. Good body control by Henderson. Great hands by Allen Henderson. That is not an easy catch. A guy running underneath him. But uh, again, Damon Bailey lays it out there. Great catch. Great job by Damon Bailey faking at the man and making him pick up his dribble there. Houston had to pick it up. Because of it, they're not able to get a very good shot. Good block out there as Henderson forced Coleman out of bounds. Another fast break. Indiana, wild shot by Pat Knight. Evans is there for the board, and he draws the foul. The problem there, with, I, I think, with Pat is he's really looking to pass the ball. I, I, I don't think he came down the floor thinking, I'm going to go in here and take a little five-foot bank shot. I think he's, he's thinking shoot second and pass first. And because of it, he kind of got up in the air and he had to shoot the basketball there. Evans will go to the line. Coleman picks up his second foul. Evans gets that first one. 44 points, we still got 6.54 left. The offense is, uh, is getting easy shots, the shooting percentage way up, but obviously controlling the tempo of the game too. Tennessee Tech giving the post up and uh, IU's gonna continue to take it. IU getting a lot of easy shots. 45-19, 6.48 left. Hart, Evans, Bailey, Henderson, and Pat Knight in the lineup. Another steal, here comes Bailey. He goes to Hart for the easy layup. Good hands by Steve Hart. Had a guy right on him. Again, David Bailey does a nice job of putting the ball where it needs to be and an easy layup for Indiana. It's kind of a one-on-one, -on -one, and Bailey kept his head up that time, looking more for the pass than the drive, as we've seen sometimes, or he keeps that head down. Perimeter offense by Tennessee Tech. Step out by Evans is good. You can, you can see Coleman really can use his body inside. Blocked by Bailey as he snuck in from behind. Brian Evans does a good job of just keeping his hands. You can see he just he didn't, he didn't get much of the ball, but just tipped it enough to another teammate. Damon Bailey makes a good pass. You can see this is not an easy pass. Steve Hart, nice job using his body, getting the basketball, putting it in. Out of bounds, a shot clock down the nine, so Houston puts it up right away for a three-pointer. And that's his second of the ball game. Not very good defense there on that inbounds play. They let the man just come around the screen to get an easy shot. Henderson takes it inside. He really covers a lot of ground on just one dribble, gets the easy shot. 49-22, Henderson has nine points. And Tennessee Tech's Frank Harrell coach, he wants a timeout. 
We will be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Pace offensively. As Tech inbounds, and you can see Leary with the defense way up high. I haven't seen much offense at all by Tech as Indiana's forced them out of their regular pattern. Houston goes inside, but is sealed off. He gets a chance for the three-pointer. Good rebound effort there. And a follow-up by Greg Bibb as one of the few times Indiana's out muscled inside. 49-24. Pat Knight on the drive. Here's Evans. Got a little low on the offense. Good job of using his body. Good back to the basket move there by Brian Evans. See, Floyd's only 6'2", 175. Evans knew right away he could take it. that little jumper. And he's got seven. Coleman inside. He's really done a nice job of using that body. Well, Indiana's doing a bad job of not getting a body on him. He's the one guy that you got to get a body on him. Keep him, you know, five, ten feet away from the basket. Right now, they're turning, watching the ball go up and going in to rebound it. They need to get a body on him and then let somebody else go after the rebound. Leary misses the shot. Evans tips. Henderson tips. This is better action. Here's Coleman with the block and the foul as Indiana stayed after it well that time. Did a nice job of staying after him. A pretty good block by Coleman. He got a lot of ball there. Uh, he, is a, he is a big man inside. His third foul, though, here in the first half. Let's see if Frank Harrell keeps him in there. Sharon Wilkerson checks in as Evans leaves. Tennessee Tech, number 42, Carlos Carter enters the game for the first time, 6'7", 200, so he can help with some rebounding. Robert West also checks back in. There's Carter. And Henderson's at the line. This will be two free throws as Tennessee Tech is committed 10 fouls. A soy bean foul shot reminder, you can help make our environment cleaner by encouraging the use of soy diesel in buses, trains, and trucks throughout Indiana. Henderson good on the second, and that didn't take long as he now has 10 points, 11 points, and 10 rebounds. Another double-double, as they say, as he leaves. Richard Mandeville checks in. Now, this would be a good match for Mandeville, though Coleman's out of the lineup now. Yeah, I was hoping Mandeville that he could, could get in there against Coleman. He's a little bigger and stronger. West outside misses. Indiana again with a rebound, this time Larry. Splits the middle. Tough shot is missed. And Bibb has the rebound. Houston comes back outside to Bibb. There's Mandeville with a big board. Now he protects it. Gets it to a guard. Good job. Larry out front. Good job. He was going to throw to Mandeville. That's not the place the center wants the ball. Wilkerson tries three on the set shot outside. That's better for him on the shot. He's got, he's got very good form. I'm sure the one thing he will work on a little bit is trying to get the shot off a little bit quicker. It does take him a little time to get his shot off, but uh, you can tell when he goes to the free throw line, he shoots the basketball very, very well. Carter has it and goes back outside. That night on the defense, good fake there by Bibb, and he gets the easy shot. 56-28, Indiana leads. Six now for Bibb, 3.13 left. Pat Knight, the pass inside. Mandeville goes to the hoop. And that foul comes on Carter. Maybe look at that left-hand baby hook there as he comes in the lane. Either that or just you know, use your body and take it up to the, to the basket. Uh, he almost got hit in the head with it there. Pat, Pat Knight made a quick pass. But uh, when you're seven foot tall and you get it down there in the block, it's time to take it to the basket. Either go to the free throw line or get a basket. Bailey comes out still with 12. Has to have a number of assists also. He's really done a nice job getting the ball up the floor and distributing it to people. Mandeville, the seven foot freshman at the line. La Canada, California. This is on the first. Good look at the youngster. I can just see what he's thinking. I make so many of these in practice, and I come out here in the game. And I can't throw out. There he did. He makes one out of two. 57-28. Indiana leads. 
Good job by Leary of coming over, faking, making the guy pick up his dribble. That's the type of thing you're looking for. Mandeville keeps on his feet, so Carter has to dish out. This crowd appreciating the defense that Indiana's putting out. Floyd gets in for a tip, and it's missed. A couple missed blockouts, really the only defensive miscues by Indiana. Now a jump ball and possession arrow to Indiana. Todd Leary will get on the floor and go after it. Good job by Todd. And he's played very, very well the last two games, and uh, Nice job of getting on the floor there and getting Indiana another possession. Pat Knight on the drive baseline. That time he looked to score. Missed on the shot. Hart not able to get the board. Quick move by Houston. Nice job of getting down the floor, but off on the shot, out of bounds to Indiana. Would have been nice to have seen Wilkerson go back and try to get in position to, to maybe take the charge there rather than just going back and kind of reaching for the basketball and letting the guy get to the basket. A good, a real good player in the Big Ten is going to, going to take that to the basket and get it in. Now Graham got an elbow right to the top of the head. Trainer Tim Garl there takes a look at him. It's Todd Leary. Pat Graham's in the lineup. Todd Leary on the IU bench. Foul call this time on Mandeville, his first. And that'll be free throws at the other end. Got a pretty young crew out there right now. I think it's important that Pat Graham get, get them together. And uh, they need to get some type of offense going on the other end. It's been a team so far, Ted, where we've seen a lot of mixed lineups. Uh, the starting lineup. Uh, may go three, four, five minutes, but after that, it's really a bunch of guys coming in. So I think all the players have to be ready. You never know when your number will come up. The coach has been very fortunate the last couple of years. He's had a, he's had about ten players deep that he could play last year. Uh, you know, we were just a little short as having a one big guy after Henderson went down a little bit. But uh, this this team again, very versatile, can do a lot of things and put a lot of people in different fit different places. Buckley hits one out of two. Pat Knight. Gets it back. Man-to-man -man defense the entire game by the Golden Eagles. Wilkerson one-on-one, -on -one, picks it up. Good cut by Hart to release that pass. And he just comes up short on the shot. Maurice Houston. Good pass to Floyd, and Mandeville there, another board, a little wild on that outlet pass, as Knight not able to catch up to him. Houston will take that. He decides not to. Good pass there. Oh, he traveled. He can't travel away. And Tommy Rucker saw a travel against Tennessee Tech. 11 turnovers in the first half. Best thing to do when you get in that situation is just take the ball up in the crowd. The majority of the time, they're going to call a foul for somebody getting you with the body, hacking you. You try to move around with that many feet, and you're going to travel 90% of the time. Graham goes left. Indiana doing a lot of dribbling right now, not a lot of screening. Good pass by Pat. Oh, that was going in. It was right on the rim and leaning one maybe inside. Mandeville tipped the ball. Offensive goaltending takes away the basket. Good aggressive play by Mandeville, but on that, you just have to have, to have the patience to keep your hand off there. I, I think that ball had the spin on it. It was going to go in the basket. 57-30, we're down to the last minute and eight of the first half. The pressure by Graham as he slaps that ball away. Frustrating, you can tell by the look on West's face. What do I have to do to get a shot here? Yeah, they're just not used to, to having to work this hard to get a shot. A lot of teams backing off of them and letting them have those three-pointers. Indiana makes them work very, very hard. Even 30 feet from the basket, their guards are playing them very hard and head up. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Bounds comes to Houston. Tough match here for Pat Graham because Houston's one of those small guys likes to drive the lane. Graham did a nice job there. Wilkerson nearly had that block, but a three-pointer that time by Robert West. Pretty good recovery by Wilkerson, but the uh, guy made a good shot there. Pat Knight inside to Mandel, turns. Very soft, Wilkerson there with the tip. Indiana's got a lot of guys that are very active around the board. Hart, Wilkerson. Uh, Brian Evans is very active. Again, IU looking at the basketball rather than finding their man and blocking him out, then going for the basketball. So many times a young team is going to look for the basketball, thinking they can out-jump everybody as they, as they have in high school. 
In college, you're just not going to do that. You're going to get some big, strong guys that are going to beat you to the board. And that time, Dennis Buckley snuck in there for the rebound. Indiana waiting for the last shot now. Clock is down to 10 seconds. Wilkerson. Down to three. Graham's going to have to shoot it. Oh! He draws the foul, and he goes to the line. Good job by Wilkerson of getting the ball and the guy who can score. Getting it in his hands. If Bailey was out there, they'd want it in his hand. Pat Graham is, is the veteran. That's who you need to get the ball in his hands. Does a nice job, uses his body, leans in, gets hacked. And unbelievable, he made the shot. 13 points for Pat Graham. Four tenths of a second left. And Graham finishes the half with a three-point play. The inbounds pass comes in west from half court is off. An excellent first half for Indiana in defense of the Indiana Classic. Halftime score 62 to 35. We'll be back with our halftime after these messages. 23. And now let's visit with the Farm Bureau Insurance Project XL guests of the game. Hello, I'm George McGinnis, and if you're a high school student, Project XL invites you to use your talents to create a message about this year's topic. A couple three-pointers, you can see Houston seven, Bibb six, and Coleman five, Coleman off the bench. For Indiana, take a look, Pat Graham leads away with 14. Damon Bailey has 12 points, but also add on there, he's got seven assists. Allen Henderson also in double figures, along, and Brian Evans with eight. Good balance scoring by Indiana. Good look there at Allen Henderson. Ted, I really like the, uh, the tenacity look in his eye. He's had it several times in this part of the year. I think that helps him mentally. He's in the ball game. He's very difficult to stop. He's been playing very well, especially since the Kentucky game. I thought that he came in, and especially in the second half. Bailey was a little tired, was having some problems with some, with some leg cramps, things like that, and uh, Allen Henderson really picked up the slack. There's IU's bench, Steve Hart, Ron Felling. And that is Tennessee Tech coach Frank Harrell wondering what he can do to help his team. Tennessee Tech has the ball inbounds, and Indiana goes with Todd Leary to start the second half. And also Todd Lindeman in there. He takes a shot from Bibb here early. And Coleman, the big guy for Tennessee Tech, also in the lineup. And, and Bibb and Lindemann have been swinging there, and Sid Rodehever is going to make the call, and that's going to go on Bibb. A very physical game in that center position today. Well, Bibb's a little upset. Bibb's a little upset. You're going to see him. He's going to run into, uh, you can see, Lindemann's just got his hands up, he's, which is what he should do. Bibb don't like it. Bibb's only 6'5". When you're 6'5", you get in there with the big boys, you're going to get hit in the nose once in a while with those elbows. That's why, you, that's, that's, that's why you don't get in there. You get in there in the NBA and they knock you down. Here's Bibb at the other end. Too quick on the break, but the follow-up by Carlos Floyd is good. Bailey quickly down the other way, and he draws the foul. Good call. Teddy Valentine did a nice job. Bailey trying to avoid the charge right there. Moves into the middle. The guy kind of moves up underneath him. Good call. That foul goes against Robert West, his second. Bailey get the line for two. Good transition there by Indiana as they get the ball down quickly, trying to get the good shot. Another successful trip to the free throw line for the Hoosiers. And speaking of success, Zoe Diesel has been tested successfully in boats, trucks, buses, tractors, and locomotives, thanks to research funded by Soybean Farmers. Bailey hits both there. He now has 14. Indiana increases its lead. Still early in the first minute here of the second half. Houston goes one on one against Leary. The shot missed. Bibb bounces it off of Pat Knight. Coleman able to come up with a block by Lindemann. Indiana still fighting for it. Lindemann was in good position for that block, but Henderson will draw the foul from behind. Allen Henderson once again swiping down at the basketball. Good hands by Coleman. Big as he is, he just needs to take it up, but Lindemann does a nice job getting his hand on it. Nobody can come up with it. A foul from Henderson from behind. Foul Linda called on, on uh, well, got on 33, but that can't be Graham. He's not in the ball game. No, it was on Henderson, is who it was on. 
I think that uh, Lindemann needs this kind of play. He needs to get in there and bang around with people. Don't back off of people when they try to, you know, when they swing elbows and things at you. That's when you need to get right in there, get a little bit more aggressive. That's the type of thing he needs. It's going to be a physical Big Ten conference. You've got Michigan with Howard. Uh, Wisconsin's got Wallace, the big center at, uh, in there with Minnesota as a big team. And there's a big play there as Henderson goes up high on the lob. Another assist for Damon Bailey. Allen Henderson, good decision there. That's one he would like to have dunked, but he didn't think he could quite get there, so he just laid it in. They all count the same. Indiana helps on the weak side. West has to come back outside with it. They're trying to go to Coleman inside. Lindemann's got that big arm there trying to Lindemann deflect it. He needs to use his body and not let Coleman around him because Coleman is not willing to use his feet to get around anybody. He'll try to go through. Pat Knight hustles that one down. Here's Leary. It's a two on three. Pat Knight gets the layup, and he's got it. Good pass by Todd Leary. Saw Pat coming down the night. Good fill by Pat Knight coming down the lane. His first two of the game. Leary stops west on the outside. Pat watch, Knight. If you watch when the ball goes to the other side, if you get in front of Coleman, he's not willing to go around you. He's just going to try to go through you. And he did that time a quick move as he went through Lindemann's arms and drew the foul. I don't know about a quick move. I don't know if he if he does anything very quick, but he but he did <laughs> but he did get it in the basket. He is a big big guy. I mean, uh, he's got to be weighing in the 260, probably 270 range. He's very thick up top, but uh, he's a guy that you just need to really work down low as far as not letting him get to the position where he wants to on the floor. Lindemann's third foul. That rebound comes out high, and Floyd picks it up. Steal by Henderson. Two on one with Larry. He fakes oh. the pass and the jam. The defense committed. Henderson did the rest. Wonderful play by Allen Henderson. That is not an easy play to make, especially when you don't handle the ball that much. But uh, he looked very smooth in doing it. 15 now for Henderson. In the end lead, 70-41. We're just two and a half minutes here in the second half. Tennessee Tech just kind of drifts around the floor. They want three-pointers, and they're willing to take them whenever. Oh, he saw him coming, but he just couldn't get a hold of the basketball. Pat Knight to Larry. Larry over the top, but it's missed. West with the fast break as Tennessee Tech had the numbers on the Hoosiers for an easy basket. Robert West gets that, his 17th point, so he's been the bright star for the Golden Eagles. Henderson on the wing. Tries to back Bibb inside. Well, Knight picks up the dribble. Indiana drifting a little bit offensively, not getting a lot of good screens here. Henderson steps in with that shot. Lindemann the board and the follow as he goes over Coleman. He made a good cut there, too. He gave the ball to Henderson. Henderson decided to take the shot. Todd made a nice move down the lane. Could have easily gotten the ball back, probably for a layup. Continued to fight for that, that position inside. That foul on Lindemann called that time for backing into Coleman. That's the fourth now on Lindemann. Yeah, I think they called it on him uh, for kind of using his knee, to kind of trying to root him out, root him out of his position. But uh, you can see he uses his knee a little bit, uses his body, but that's, that's really pretty good post play. In the Big Ten, I doubt if you're going to get that call very often. The outside shot is over the basket. West has it inside Lindemann. Avoiding that fifth foul, could just hold his hands straight up, and West gets it to drop. 72-45, Indiana with the lead. Bailey outside for three. He set right up on that one. David Bailey can get a shot anytime he wants one tonight. Tennessee Tech not willing to, to take the position away from him. And uh, they're going to have to work a little harder if they want to take things away from Damon Bailey. Coleman tries to force his way inside, and Lindemann able to draw the charge. Because of the play that happened in the first half with the elbow, uh, the officials have really watched things inside. And uh, no matter what you do inside, you're going to get a foul. 15-53 left. Indiana leads 75-45. We'll be back after these messages. Good job defensively getting to the ball. And here's the play. He's going to make a fake and that is not that easy a play to make without traveling but Allen did a, did a nice job good game 15 points 12 rebounds Bailey outside he fakes the three-pointer oh tough pass there Henderson not able to come up with it 
Bailey trying to get to the basket that time, but anytime he wants that three pointer or a 15 foot shot, he can get that shot at any time tonight. Indiana leads by 30. But a nice job uh, stopping Maurice Houston, their leading scorer. Inside pass to Floyd. Lindemann goes high for the board. A dribble there to avoid the travel. And the crowd likes that three. Oh, two. boy, good pass. Henderson missed it, but finally controlled himself to get the easy layup. Good job by Pat Knight looking from half court. Saw Allen come open. And uh, good job of Allen Henderson not giving up on it. Didn't get the dunk. Got it knocked away, but still went up and got the shot. 17 for Henderson. Indiana will platoon a new five players at the next dead ball. This group has been out there. A lot of this second half haven't done a nice job. Lindemann high on the board. The outlet, but a travel before he's able to get rid of it. Lindemann did get bumped, but he's going to have to get used to getting bumped. He's got to get a wider base. We're going to take a look here. Pat Knight gets the outlet right there. You can see he turns, looks, and gives a, it's a very good pass. It just slipped through Allen's hands. That's one that he's going to put in. But you can see they knock it away from him. He stays with it, able to put it in. Good and job by Allen. 76th point after the game. Stop by your neighborhood 76 station for quality 76 gasolines or convenience items. Long inbounds pass comes back to Floyd, and he's able to drive for the layup. Pat Graham tried to sneak over and get a steal, and when he did, his man came open. Nobody got over to help. Hart tries the baseline. Comes back out. Pretty good spacing here. Needs some good picks. Hart trying to post up inside. He should be able to post, post up inside. Mandeville also looking. Here's Evans. They haven't seen a lot of Brian, but when he's in the ball game, you know he's in as he hits a quick hoop there for his 10th point of the game. Very quick release. He came right off the baseline, right off that screen, went right up for the jumper. Good job. Good pass to Brian Evans. It's hard to believe, Ted, that this is a team that, that struggled so much in that first game with Butler because since that time in, in the three contests, they really come on strong. Floyd can't get that one to drop. Mandeville with the board. Three on two. Hart goes back outside. Evans eyes up a three. A little short. Hart taps it into Mandeville. Tipped by Evans. And Indiana playing well. Good hands by Brian Evans. Good job by Steve Hart there. He wasn't able to get his hands on the ball. He tipped it to Mandeville for an easy layup. Mandeville not able to get it in, but Indiana continued to stay with it. Houston leaves his feet. Graham has the steal. Four on four. Houston with a good play. He snuck right up behind and deflected a ball. A fast break now to West. The layup is good. Wilkerson can't block the shot. 81-49, Indiana leads. In most cases, you, you look for your players to help you out a little bit when you got somebody coming up behind. But Pat Knight, or, or Pat Graham, knew that that guy was behind him because he went, went in front of him down on the other end. Uh, he's just got to do a better job protecting the ball there, not letting the guy knock it away. Mandeville gets it in the post, but fell away a little too much. That ball comes up short. Not as much fouling here in the second uh, half. Both teams with three team fouls. West tries to post up inside. Bibb has the rebound. That foul will go against Mandeville. Indiana a little sloppy here on the defensive end. Kind of stood up a couple times that time, let their, let their men get around them, didn't block out real well. On the other end of the floor, they get to dribbling and watching the basketball a little bit rather than going down and getting a solid screen, making sure that guy's trying to get open, things like that. Uh, you know, that's things that Pat Graham needs to, you know, pull the guys together, get them to set in some good screens. If you set good screens offensively, majority of the time good things are going to happen for you. People are going to get open, going to get some good shots. Bibb is long on that first free throw. Tech's got quite a schedule. Their last, uh, they played Kentucky, of course. Their last game against Appalachian State. 2,600 people came to see him play. They go to Ohio State next week after this game. So they played some tough competition. Wilkerson on the block. Here's a three on one. Wilkerson goes to Hart. Oh! And Hart goes to the basket. Wilkerson really unselfish there. He could have easily taken that ball in for a layup. He saw Steve Hart coming from half court. He gave it to him right in stride. See, that's one thing that you and I didn't try. If you jump over guys, they don't call charging on you. It's just when we went in there, we hit the guy, they called charging. 
A jump shot outside by Reggie Mayo is good. Hart just jumps over, guys, so uh, uh, that's a little advantage for him. 83-52, Indiana leads. Behind the back, Evans goes into Graham. And a foul, a lot of fouling, Ted. One of the things, uh, Indiana did not get to the line a lot against Butler, but boy, since then, Kentucky, Notre Dame, uh, this ball game tonight, they are really getting to the line. Well, the real key there is just going down and making the offense or the defense work. You're getting a lot of good screens. Uh, people are moving around. After a while, and especially you get to the last 10 minutes of the basketball game, the defense is tired of having to, to know every time down the floor they're going to have to play. 20 seconds, 30 seconds of defense. They get to grabbing. They get to pushing people. And because of it, you go, you go to the free throw line. The information provided in tonight's game regarding the environmental benefits of soybean products was brought to you by Indiana's 40,000 soybean farmers and made possible through their contribution to Cleaners Statewide Food Bank. Graham's good on the second. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Now back in the Indianapolis area, does some work here on the, some of the Indian players. Tom Abernathy, Tom and I played way back in high school together, and of course here at Indiana. A lot of fun to see the guys when they come back to the game. Yeah, they always enjoy coming back, and I know Coach enjoys them coming back and support, supporting Scott May, the team. Yeah. Scott May is also here tonight. He's got his two young boys with him. And there's a good look at Scott right behind the IU bench. I'm sure Coach would, would see the guys sometimes. The boy would love to say, hey, Scotty, get back in there. Ever get back in there. <laughs> because we get a chance to sit right behind the IU bench there, but uh, got to go with the guys who are dressed. Mandeville inside. Leary did a nice job of coming up with that ball outside. Let's see if this group of guys can get some good solid screens. And a lot, a lot of times they start dribbling the basketball a lot instead of getting good screens. Good screen there by Hart. I think Biff got a piece of that ball when Patrick shot it. Probably deflected there as it goes way left. Coleman and Mandeville now matched up. This will be a good experience for the freshman Mandeville. Hart with the steal, the pass by Wilkerson. Hello. Makes it look too easy, doesn't he? Steve Hart with the dunk, his 10th point. He must be 6'10", as easily as he gets up there, huh? And Indiana hits the 100 mark. 6.07 left. West is open for three. He falls short, and uh, they're going to say Wilkerson hit that out. Wilkerson on that shot needs to needs to turn and block his man out rather than going after the basketball. If he does, the basketball probably bounces right back into his arms. Tough getting it in. Uh, they do. Mandeville has attacked. Hold on. Let's see. Pat Knight and Bibb are... Uh, we're in a tangle. The referees hold the benches out. You know, Bibb, Bibb has had a problem with who's ever guarded him all night. And he's thrown elbows. A little bit ago, we saw him throw an elbow at, at, at Lindemann. And uh, he threw one at Patrick. And Patrick uh, finally said he's, you know, he'd had enough of it. Patrick went right over and grabbed Bibb as they wrestled to the floor. The officials regain order. They call Pat Knight over. Let's see what we can pick up. We take a look at it, and again, Bibb gets inside. They're pushing on one another. And you can see him, he throws that elbow right up at Patrick's face. Patrick brought him right down to the ground. And two points for the takedown there, but uh, again. And both players have been ejected from the game. Pat Knight heads to the Indiana locker room. And Bibb has not left yet as Ted Valentine has gone over to the Tennessee Tech bench. And now Bibb begins to leave the floor as he has to walk the entire length of the floor to get back to the visitor's locker room. 
Well, I think there's a little frustration in the air tonight uh, with everything going on and uh, things that uh, you know happened just prior to the game. So uh, still, there's nothing uh, you know things like that we don't need in basketball. People can get hurt. The officials will confer there, but it looked to Ted like to me that that Bibb did initiate the contact, uh, and Patrick reacted quickly by uh, by taking him right down. Well. I'm sure that you know everybody's sitting here thinking we're going to take the Indiana players' side, but really I'm I'm out here to take uh, you know tr tr try to tell you what's going on here, and you can just see he just he just elbows Patrick right in the face, and Patrick says enough. And uh, you know if you remember back a little bit ago, Bibbs the same guy that that kind of threw a, threw an elbow at Lindemann that didn't get called down inside. Uh, you know he's frustrated. He looks at the scoreboard. It's 100 to 55. I'm sure he's a little bit embarrassed, not only frustrated and, and frustrated along with it. But uh, still, you, you, have to, you, you have to keep your emotions intact when well, you're on the basketball. And Patrick wasn't in a position where he's trying to bang the guy in the head. He, he kept a bear hug on him just yeah, to hold him down. It, the rest of the players kept their distance. Exactly. He, he, he didn't cheap shot him or, you know, try to punch him in the back of the head or the face, anything to hurt him. I think Patrick just took him down and says, hey, I'm not going to take that. And, uh, again, something we don't like to see happen. But uh, when you get a lot of people out there, uh, and there is a little frustration in there, as we mentioned a little earlier. That'll be a technical foul on each player. West now. Robert West shoots two free throws for Tennessee Tech, and he's good on both. And now we go down to the Indiana end, and Indiana will get two free throws. Todd Leary will step to the line. Notice Damon Bailey ran off the floor. I'm sure he went in to, to talk to Patrick a little bit, uh, being uh, the captain of the team and uh, being one of the older leaders. Uh, it's good to see him, you know, do, do things like that. I think that's important as far as being a leader on, on your basketball team. Larry hits the second possession arrow, goes to Indiana. So the Hoosiers bring it up. 102, 57, just under six minutes left. A travel call that time as Hart. Took an extra step getting started. Once in a while, just a little too quick for himself. There uh, he thought he saw an opening to the basket and uh, picked that pivot foot up before he got the ball on the floor. Mayo's outside. This is Houston. I'm sure it's a little frustrating for Tennessee Tech also to look at the scoreboard and see how far they're behind. And Indiana continues to play hard, but they have to understand that this Indiana team is out here to just play as hard as they possibly can and not really worry about the score on the scoreboard. Houston gets open for three. You can see he can hit that shot. Just hasn't had enough opportunities tonight. Well below his season average, only his tenth point. Inside to Pat Graham, fading away. That's a tough shot. Hart's able to tip it, though. Graham tries another one, and it's off. Mayo is stripped that time by Wilkerson. Spin dribble, it's three on two to Hart. Tough shot there as he hits a hook shot coming back into play. They made a good decision not to take it up on Coleman because Coleman would have sent it back, but uh, made a great play. I thought he was going to take it out of there instead he just turned and took a quick shot. 12 points. Houston misses on the shot. 12 points for Hart. And that's going to go on Coleman, his fifth. And he's going to sit down. Mandeville a little bigger body in there. It's a little harder for Coleman to get around and get up over him. Mandeville has to, has to understand that he's a big, strong guy and needs to use that. And Coleman tried to jump up over and got the foul. Let's watch the last action there as Pat Graham brings it up. Pat Graham makes a good pass. Catches, sees the big man inside. I don't know if he was planning on taking that shot or not, but he sure looked good. Just spun right around and the little baby hook shot was there. Indiana very convincing in today's ball game. 104 to 60. Mandeville outside needs to come right back to the post. A tough pass there as Wilkerson gets beat to the spot. West from way outside, high off the rim and over the backboard. Not a very good pass on the other end. He was looking at the offensive man, not reading the defense. The defense was in good position. No way that that pass was going to be going to get through there to uh, to Wilkerson. Larry's inside. A tip that time by.
Steve Hart, Ted, there's so many things he could do. He's just so quick off the floor. I mean, I, you look at it and you thought you saw him on this side of the floor just a second ago. You watched the ball bounce one time and all of a sudden his hand comes up over the rim and, rim and knocks it in. Uh, he's just very, very active, at, you know, no matter where he is on the floor. His reaction time seems so much quicker than the other players and then he's able to get higher and faster to the basket. Another spin move here is missed. He's got it again. Goes inside to Graham. A shot is missed. Mishandled, no call. Tech brings it back down. Slower pace now as Tennessee Tech tries to get an offense. 42 is Carlos Carter trying to post up on Mandeville. Indiana's still making them work. They're wanting to get a shot as, as quick as possible. Shot clock down to seven. Finally, Mandeville reaches over the top. Move your feet in that situation, get around the top. Coach Felling stands up and yells at me. Basically, if you don't have the position in, in, in that situation, you're just going to have to back off and play from behind. And uh, in that situation, he gets caught going over the top and the guy just shoots two, two free throws. Mitchell checks in for Tennessee Tech. Robert West leaves. Also, Earl Smith, number 14, checks in in Houston will probably sit the rest of the game. This is Buckley for our Carlos Carter, 42. Good on the first. There's the IU bench. I'll tell you, Ted, one of the most relaxing times in an IU game is that time when the second team was in the game and we had a chance to sit there, not uh, being on the same teams, but I'm sure the same feeling. We came out tough and we got the job done. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports Network. The basketball, and that's the type of things he needs inside. Now here's Mandeville, did a nice job there, not fouling as the ball came in, but then he bumps with the body, and now a three-point play. Once, once again, he just... He's not getting him himself in position. You can see right away he gets behind, and th then he wants to start bumping the guy. Once the guy gets the ball, you need to almost back off of him a little bit because if you're an offensive man and you can feel that defensive man on, on you, a majority of the time you can either lean into him right to the basket or you're going to be able to jump away from him, kind of a fall away jump shot. E either way, you're probably going to score. Carter misses, and Mandeville fights for that board. Fast break opportunity, Wilkerson. Came under the basket, Mandeville tips. Out of bounds, touch last by Indiana. Mandeville went to the board, got a hold of the basketball, but didn't, didn't, didn't finish the play. He, uh, he got his hands on it, all he had to do was lay it in. He did all the hard work and then just forgot to make the basket. Classic record uh, has been broken. 106 points tonight sets the record, now 108. The Assembly Hall record, 118 points. The old classic record was 101. This team reached it easily. I think I was here when they had 118. I think that was against Iowa a few years ago. Mitchell misses everything, but Tech comes up with the board. Hart tries for the steal, and that leaves an opening as Buckley gets the easy two. Wilkerson gets two back, though, as he's able to drive the right side for the layup. Hart and Wilkerson do a, an excellent job of looking for one another on the floor. And uh, they get the ball to each other in good positions where they can score. Smith outside missed. Buckley's got it. Hart is great at timing that block from behind. This time, though, it goes out of bounds. That's frustrating, too, when you're an offensive player. I used to, or when I played with Isaiah Thomas, he was always so good at coming from behind and knocking that ball away, and he would never touch your hand. It's so frustrating to get up there and think you got a wide open jump shot, and all of a sudden, some hand sweeps it away from you. Long outside shot, Eric Mitchell with the three pointer. Down to a minute and a half. Indiana in the lead comfortably. Leary for three outside. High and the rebound to Mitchell. Mayo comes off a pick high. Hart battles for that board. And the 
This foul goes on Mitchell, a push off on Wilkerson. Well, Indiana going to get this win. Uh, one reason coach likes the team to play in these tournaments is uh, so, you know, they don't have a lot of time to prepare. Tomorrow morning, I'm sure they'll come in and go over some things as far as uh, who's, who's ever able to win the second game. But uh, you really have to mentally prepare yourself to come, to come right back against another team, new players, teams that are going to do different things. So uh, I'm sure coach will be very interested to see how the team you know, comes back a after a big victory tonight. Oral Roberts and Washington State meet immediately following this game. That winner will play Indiana tomorrow in the championship game. Don't know a lot about either team, although I do know Washington State has had victories over Michigan State and Alabama already this year, and those are two pretty good programs. They're 6 and 0 on the year, so that could be a good test. And in fact, that's who Indiana meets. Free throws are good. 12 69, down to the final minute now. Carter hits a shot there inside the paint. Indiana still running the offense. Some pretty good discipline here inside to Mandeville. Three seconds as Mandeville did not get out of the lane after he released that pass. And he gets called for it. Caught in there with the basketball. That situation, you have to give it up and get out of there. That referee's looking to see if you're going to move out of there. Smith on the drive. Graham tips that one away. And Indiana gets possession. One more turnover for Tennessee Tech. Indiana's defense has been very, very good. As Larry limping a little bit. He seems to be all right. I think he just got Charlie Horse or something there. But uh, Indiana's defense has been very, very good throughout the game. Lob pass set up. Wilkerson not able to get up to receive it. He got bumped. Indiana steals. Now he goes up strong. And a foul. You're right, Ted. I think Hart and Wilkerson really look for each other a lot out there. They, they really do a nice job of finding one another on the floor. I think, they, that they, I think they're roommates, but uh, when they get on the floor, they really complement each other very, very well. You can see good pass by Hart. Wilkerson setting up. He was going to try to dunk the basketball. The guy grabs his, grabs his wrist and uh, gets a chance to go to the free throw line. Take a look at his free throw form. He really does a nice job of setting up. Good free throw shooters kind of push the ball up to the basket. And you'll notice him, he sets the ball real nice in his hands, has the same routine time after time, and he kind of pushes the ball towards the basket. Wonderful free throw shooter. 11 now for Wilkerson. He gets two. We're down to the final 15 seconds. Wilkerson tries for the steal. And that stops the clock on the foul. Reach with the right hand there across his body. Get called a lot to try that play. Yeah. Coach always always talks to you about you know reaching with the with the other hand. And, uh, that time he came all the way across his body. Uh, not a play that he's going to make if it's a tight basketball game. A relaxing time for the coaches too as they know Indiana was well prepared for today's ball game. Gave good effort. And they come away with a victory. And when will Felling be off the injured reserve? I see he's still still hobbling around. Now he's in that walking cast. He's at least getting around enough to be on the bench. No more quick moves this year for him. We hate to blow that out again. 114-73. Indiana may get one more shot. Wilkerson drives. Larry from way downtown. <laughs> He's got it. They're going to come up one short of the assembly all. Well, I, I thought they were. They still got three seconds now. And it'll go all the way back down since nobody touched the basketball to go all the way back down. And the bench pretty excited. They're probably not aware of the, the uh, assembly hall record of 118. So a last second shot here. Indiana sitting at 117 right now. So. <laughs> You said there wouldn't be excitement in the game tonight. Wilkerson fires it, and that'll do it as Indiana defeats Tennessee Tech in the opening game. Smiles all around. Allen Henderson, Damon Bailey, and Brian Evans. 117-73. Indiana with the victory. We'll be back with more after these messages. Making it to the front. Played much better since the Butler game. Three big games. A